Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Cook with Brooke, the cooking show that doesn't have any food. This show is actually about what's cooking at the Air Force Enlisted Village, in both in Bob Hope Village and in the Hawthorne House. So we're glad that you're with us today. Um, I, I had to tell you this little story. I was walking around the campus the other day and I saw this gentleman, he was driving around, and he was looking for a parking spot. And I kind of heard out of the side uh, as I was walking by him, and he's praying. He says, Lord, if you will just open a parking spot for me, I will stop drinking. I will stop swearing. I'll go to church every Sunday. And I looked over, and the clouds parted, and the sun shined down on this parking spot right in front of him. And I heard him say, never mind, Lord, I found one. So that's the joke for the week. Again, if you have a better joke, send it to me, and I'll try to incorporate it. Until then, you're stuck with the ones that I choose. But today, we have a, a great treat. We have Regan Work, who is our IT professional, that's going to come on, explain a little bit what's happening on the campus from an information technology standpoint. And then we're also going to talk about COVID-19, and I'm going to give you the latest that we see from the staff standpoint and uh, ask for your assistance in some ways. So uh, it, it's going to be a great show. I'm glad that you're tuning in. Hopefully you find these very valuable. I know it's good for us to be able to communicate. Uh, but before we get started, let's go over to Knife's Edge and find out what's cooking over at Carrie's Cafe. This is Carrie from Knife's Edge Cafe with the menu for the week of the 20th of July. On Monday, we have pierogies, kielbasa, and braised cabbage. Our soup is tomato florentine. On Tuesday, we have chicken cordon bleu with rice pilaf and vegetable, and our soup is French onion. On Wednesday, we have lasagna, salad, garlic bread, and our soup is split pea. On Thursday, we have grilled Reuben sandwich with French fries and potato leek soup. And on Friday, we have fish and chips, and our soup is chicken and dumplings. We are open 11 to 1, Monday through Friday, in the Commons Building, in the ballroom. Or you can call for delivery or pickup, 850-376-1916. Thank you. Have a great week. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we now have the great pleasure of having uh, Regan work with us. Most of you have met Regan or you've at least seen him walking around the campus doing the incredible work that he does for us here in the community. He is our information technology specialist and he is in charge of all things related to computer and cable and uh, not the cock stuff, mind you, that, that's on their own, but uh, as far as what we do here on the campus and the type of services that we provide, Regan is the person that brings that all to us, and that includes both the residents and the staff, so it really is a big us. So, Regan, thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you could just kind of give a rundown of what the services are that uh, the AFEV provides. Uh, for the residents, you will probably know this. New residents, it may be a little bit more information for you that you hadn't realized yet. Or if you're thinking about moving in here, um, that gives you an opportunity to understand a little bit more about what happens here at the AFEV. So, Regan, tell us a little bit about okay. the IT stuff. Thank you, Brooke. For, uh, thanks for having me on. Um, so yeah, we do offer a uh, Wi-Fi service in the villages one through six. Um, so if you are interested in that, it's tw is $20 a month. Uh, so if you want to sign up for that, you can go down to the commons in the front desk. They had the paperwork there. So you just grab the paperwork, fill it out, turn it back in, and I'll come in and help you get everything set up. And you can put whatever devices you want on it at that point uh, on our Wi-Fi. So that is $20 a month for the Wi-Fi service in village one through six. Uh, we also have bulk cable that we offered that is included in your rent. Uh, in this bulk cable, the, uh, I, think, I believe the package that is a contour TV is the package that comes with it. And it's 100 plus channels that we offer with that. So um, it also includes too many boxes that, it, that go to your, your uh, apartments. Um, now, if you do want uh, more than two TVs hooked up in your apartments, that is an extra charge for the boxes. Uh, I believe it's right now it's about $4 a month that Cox charges for those boxes. And one thing I do want to uh, point out is if you look at your bill, because um, we had this issue before with some of our residents, that they would be charged for a third box when actually they only had two boxes in their apartment. So if you do look at your bill and you do see a third box that is on there and you only have two boxes, uh, just let us know and we'll, we will take a look at that bill uh, and uh, hopefully get that 
taken off for you and get that fixed for you. So, so you only charge twenty dollars a month for Wi-Fi. I think yeah. I pay four or five times that much downtown. Yes. Um, so it is only twenty dollars a month. Uh, we look at it making something affordable for residents to have and uh, use to to get on the internet and to check their emails and do whatever other kind of browsing they want to do. So on the and, and the, not to get too technical on it, but that Wi-Fi would support everything from streaming videos, if Correct. someone watches Netflix or something like that through their... Yeah, and I remember the first time we uh, I set those up in the apartments, uh, it was in the Village 1 through 4 at the time. I always think we're just going to set it up and they'll hook up, get it on the computer, hook up their email or whatever. And I think the first or second apartment I went into, they pulled out all their devices. They pulled out their iPads, they put their computer, they wanted their TV hooked up to stream on Netflix, and it's like, oh, okay, this is what we're going to be doing. That's okay. But it will support all those devices and uh, those services for, for you on the Wi-Fi. Wow, that's great. What, what a great deal. And then, of course, with the bulk cable included in it as well, that provides you an amazing amount of IT, both in terms of what you get from the cable and then obviously through the Wi-Fi for $20 a month. That's yes. impressive. So it, going back to the uh, the cable part, so if, it, if there are services or more channels that you do want, um, such as extra maybe the movie channels or maybe the DVR service that Cox offers, all you have to do is go down to the uh, Cox office and sign up for those and you only have to pay the difference between the bulk cable that we have and those services that you want to add to your, your yeah. Cox account. That's fantastic. So what are some of the things that uh, you get a phone call for? It's just uh, maybe common things that residents may ask you for that if they understood a little bit more, maybe they would be able to solve themselves. Yeah, so a lot of times it might be something as easy as resetting the devices. So like, like they take this last storm we had with the lightning and, and electronics do not like power surges, they don't like power outages, they don't like lightning. And sometimes when everything seems like it goes back to normal, so those devices don't work anymore. Like if you pick up your phone that you have through Cox, uh, they no longer work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is simply as going to your, uh, your device, your modem, or your, your cable box, you just unplugging them, resetting them, wait about 10 seconds and plug them back in. And a lot of times that will fix those type of issues. Mm -hmm. So. That's good. So uh, I, I find myself doing the same thing at my house when uh, my internet doesn't seem to work right. You go over and you unplug it and you wait 30 seconds and you plug it back in and it all works. So Correct. that's uh, uh, just the uh, nature of the electronics. Uh, like you said, they, they don't like lightning, nope, they, don't they don't like power surges. So. In fact, I think uh, yesterday we lost a modem over in Village 3 that Cox had to come out. And they were pretty good. They came out that afternoon and replaced that and got right. it back up and running for Village 3 there. And of course the residents will understand that uh, lightning storms and thunderstorms are not uncommon in this area. So uh, you will probably run across this at some point in the future. So it's good to have that little tip. Any other uh, tips or advice? Um, yeah, so also we do uh, have an in-house channel on campus. We have two of them. It's 1960 and 1962. And on there we show information about the uh, events that may be going on that day, maybe upcoming events, and information that we want to get out to our residents. Uh, there's also informational videos. This video is going to be on uh, one of the channels there. That's right. So, um, and, they, and I think they do play, they do show movies on the weekends too, on, the, on 1962. So we do have an in-house channel that gives out that type of information for you. Right. And they, uh, they also publish emergency information Correct. In, via that, right? Yes. Any type of emergency information uh, immediately that we need to push out, we'll, we'll throw that on the channels and you can guys tune to that if you think something's coming up right. and, and check that out. So that'll be very important for the residents to know and to tune into those channels when there's a hurricane or there's some other type of a weather event. Um, we, we will push information out through there and so you know what we're going through as far as our process and what we recommend you do as far as preparations and perhaps even evacuating at some point. So that's going to be a, a good tool for you to know uh, and to be familiar with. So, Regan, uh, any closing comments or closing thoughts before yeah. we wrap up? Um, there's a couple other things I want to point out. I think you, you've all seen uh, Holly Gate. We're doing some work over there. So that's going to be a new security gate that we're, we're installing over there. And that will be an automatic gate that allows you to we'll put a sticker on your car. Um, so that will keep that gate operational uh, day and night, whereas before I think we closed it, used to close it down at night, and you can only come through it during the daytime. But now it's going to be 24-7 be able to come through that gate with those little stickers that will ID your car with, and that'll be able to operate that gate for, for security and convenience as well. So That'll be a good service to have to be able to, to access that. And then you may have also seen, uh, we have put some cameras around the uh, campus, and we'll be continuing on putting more of these cameras around mm -hmm. the campus. Uh, 
that is more, once again, for security and safety. Right. Um, so we're installing those as well. And that, that's a great tool for us as well, you know, to protect the residents, being able to have those cameras. And, and um, it's really not for us to try to keep track of the residents. That's, that's not the intent. What we're trying to do is to have better visibility over the campus. Uh, and so we have uh, cameras that monitor both gates coming in, uh, and we're now increasing the camera coverage. So we'll have better situational awareness about what's happening on the campus and to be able to protect you. So if we do have somebody that is coming on the campus that's not authorized, we'll be able to see that through the cameras and we'll be able to help the law enforcement officers to protect our community because obviously private property, gated community, uh, we're not uh, expecting anyone to just come wandering in, but uh, this is one way that we can uh, help to prevent that from happening. Yeah, and then there's always things that we, we put in that maybe you don't even ever see. Um, I remember I went down to a, a conference and it was on technology and seniors, and one of the things they had brought out and pointed that was a good thing to, to install in, in a place like this was something called an induction loop. And we, when we did the uh, construction over at the Commons last year, that was one thing we did when we upgraded the system, the audio system over there, is we did put an induction loop in the, into the flooring. And all that is is a copper wire that kind of loops around the floor and then it ties it back into the PA system. So anything that is broadcast out over the audio system actually gets broadcast into the people's hearing aids as they are inside of that little electronic field inside the induction loop. So as we move forward with the projects file like in the, uh, the, the chapel and, and other places, we'll be looking at doing things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a great example of how technology can make your life easier. So that's something that we've been looking at. Obviously that world, that IT world changes very quickly. Uh, and Regan, we appreciate you staying on top of it and the incredible work that you do to take care of our staff and also the residents. So uh, thank you for coming on today. Thank you. Uh, hopefully uh, we, we will be able to have you back at some point and let you give an update on the different things that we're having here on campus. But again, thank you for joining us today and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and we're going to go over to our birthday videos at this time. So let's take a look at who's having a birthday in the month of July. Welcome back everybody. Happy birthday to our July birthday babies. We hope that you have a great celebration and you're able to enjoy some cake, maybe some ice cream, and to just celebrate another trip around the sun. I want to talk real quick about uh, COVID. Uh, you know that we always talk about that and that obviously that's something that has impacted our community in a big way. So I just want to touch base on a couple different things and let you know exactly what's happening inside the campus. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about outside the campus as well, because clearly that affects us. So from a, a, a COVID standpoint, we've had a couple of people that have tested positive. We've had two residents. Both of those residents were not sick. They were asymptomatic. Uh, the test results had come back and indicated that they were positive. So they quarantined. Uh, they waited the appropriate amount of time before they were released by the health department, uh, and then they've gone back into the community. So uh, although we've had a couple of positive cases that way, it's been a minimal impact, and luckily we've been able to make sure that everyone was doing the right things and protecting our entire community. We've also had a couple of staff members that have tested positive. Um, same thing with that. Uh, we've asked them to stay at home until they're released by the health department. Uh, they go back when they are notified, they go back and do contact tracing, which is them looking within the last 48 to 72 hours of contact that they have had with uh, 
other individuals, either family or friends, and they're really looking more for the close contact. So those are the things, even though you may have somebody that uh, has been positive, uh, they don't necessarily uh, have to identify everybody that they've been in touch with. It's typically the people that they've had extended duration conversations with and in close contact. So anyway, our staff members are, are doing well. Uh, we do still have one resident, or excuse me, one staff member that is out right now on quarantine. Uh, the other staff member uh, is awaiting clearance from the health department to come back. So all the, the campus right now is, is doing very well, and I thank you for your part in that. Uh, this is a collective effort for us to be able to uh, protect our entire community and to make sure that we're not unnecessarily taking risks that would uh, allow the virus to enter into the campus. Uh, and it, it literally is that type of um, a scenario to where if we have someone that comes back and is positive and hasn't been taking the right protective actions, uh, that potentially could uh, get a number of people sick here. So we are, we are asking staff members and residents to be very aware, be very conscious about what's happening. Uh, that's both inside the gates and then also outside the gates. So talking a little bit about the outside, uh, you've certainly seen the news recently with the spike in the number of cases both in the state of Florida uh, and then also within Okaloosa County. Uh, uh, much of that can be attributed to the increased testing that has been taking place, uh, but you can't just say that it's increased testing that has spiked those numbers because even though the numbers are higher, it's also the percentage of positives that are coming back that are much higher. Uh, it, uh, not long ago, about a month ago, it was down about 5% and lower in some portions of Florida. And Okaloosa County right now, I think we're about 13 or 14%. So that tells you that there's a lot more people that are being tested, but also there's a lot more cases that are out there. So you really have to be careful. You have to be aware of your surroundings. There's more and more companies that are asking for the individuals that come into their businesses to wear masks. Um, I know Walmart and Sam's Club are two that have just recently come out. So if you're going to go into those stores, you have to wear a mask. Um, so I think that is going to be a trend that you're going to see more and more of. So I wouldn't be surprised when you start going down to the grocery stores. Uh, certainly if you're going on to the base, if you're going to Eglin, you go to the commissary, you go to the BX, you go to the shop at, uh, they're asking you to wear a mask. So I think that's going to happen more and more often. Um, and at some point, uh, I suspect that the governor's going to have to make a difficult decision about whether he wants to mandate masks across the entire state. Um, just recently, Alabama, our friends to the north of us, uh, the governor there ordered masks statewide. Uh, so it, it's not too far from our thought process about what happens if the governor orders that to take place. Uh, we will comply, is, is what I would tell you in short. Uh, the governor's orders, just like we had when we had the stay-at-home orders, um, we will comply and we will ask everybody to do their part and to wear masks. Uh, so that will mean the staff members, that will mean the residents that are here will need to do that. Uh, so if that happens, there will be a lot of information that will be coming out, and we'll make sure that we publish uh, both written and then this video guidance as well that will give you a better understanding of exactly what has happened. So we want you to know that, but again, just be prepared, be thinking about it. Um, and I would ask you also to, uh, to use discretion when you invite visitors on campus, and, and we, we know that you have visitors and it's wonderful. It was a very difficult time when we weren't allowing visitors on campus. We want you to be thinking about those individuals and how trustworthy are they as far as the locations that they've been to and have they been exposed because a lot of times what you see is someone that is, is positive and they're either pre-symptomatic, meaning they don't have symptoms but they're going to get them, or they're asymptomatic which means that they are having, they have the virus and they're actually spreading the virus, but they don't have any symptoms. So even though you may be um, asking them and we're screening them at the gate, um, it, it still deserves your attention to be thinking about, is that individual someone that I know and I trust where they've been, the surroundings they've been in, and are they taking the right precautions enough that I trust them to come into campus? 
So um, that's what we have for the COVID-19 update. Uh, it's it's going to be with us for a while, folks. Um, we uh, we are we are in a different time. Um, at some point, clearly, uh, there will be a vaccine or there will be some type of a treatment that will make most of this go away. But until we get to that point, we have to do our part to be very very careful. Um, we're excited about having this show back again next week. Um, Wendell is the new chef at the Hawthorne House. He's a retired master sergeant that is just coming off active duty and has joined the Hawthorne House team. So we're going to ask him to come over here. Uh, you'll get a chance to hear for, directly from him and he'll share a little bit about what's on his mind as far as Hawthorne House and the food over there and he, he is a phenomenal chef. Uh, again, retired military, did uh, services in the Air Force for about 20 years uh, and he's uh, just joined our team so we're very fortunate to have him on and we look forward to having him on the next episode. So until we come back to that, hope that you are all safe, we hope that you are all healthy. Uh, God bless you all, have a great day and let us know if you have any questions at all. Thank you.